Oh hi, thanks for watching my video. I honestly couldn't tell you how many hours I have spent playing The Sims. I started playing around 15 years ago when we had The Sims 2. So as you can imagine, that many years of playing The Sims means that I had to get creative when playing through generations of families. No matter which game I played, I always found myself playing out the same made-up storylines that I never get tired of. So I figured I'd put pen to paper and share with you the top 10 storylines I like to play out in The Sims 4. Some are funny, some are tragic, and some are a bit twisted, but you never know. You might just see one that you want to play out in your game. Let me know in the comments if you do. Let's begin. Number 1. Trash Bag Dad Trash Bag Dad is a good-for-nothing layabout who can barely muster up enough energy to crack open his beer can on the couch. But he wasn't always this way. He somehow managed to bag himself an absolute stunner back in the day, and even had two daughters. Back in those days, Trash Bag Dad knew he was a lucky man, and he often pinched himself, because he just couldn't believe his luck. Unfortunately, one day, his entire life changed. His beautiful wife was out walking along the beach when suddenly she was struck by lightning. And just like that, she was gone. Things started to change at home. Trash bag dad stopped leaving the house, stopped cooking dinners and stopped washing. He ended up losing his job and before he knew it, the whole family was about to lose everything. This is actually where the story begins. The main character isn't trash bag dad. He's actually the teenage daughter. She saw her dad's life fall apart after his heartbreak and decides she will do everything in her power to take care of her family and stop her little sister from being taken away from the care worker. The challenge here is juggling everything at once. As the new appointed head of the house, you are responsible for paying the bills from your after-school job and odds and ends activities that can scrape together some cash, maintaining good grades, and you also have to make sure your little sister is well fed and taken care of that she goes to bed with a storybook and spray away the scary monster because you know your layabout dad isn't going to do it. The teenage years are hard, but once your sim becomes a young adult, things start getting easier. Bills are easier to pay with your full-time job. Trash bag dad starts doing the odd few jobs around here and there when you ask him to. And aside from the odd instances of teen rebellion, your sister is pretty much on the straight and narrow. You manage to convince your dad to leave the house for the first time in years to go for a family dinner to celebrate your new promotion. When you bump into one of your work colleagues, she joins for a bite to eat and sparks fly between her and your trash bag dad. Then it's up to you to decide where the story goes next. Trash bag dad. Number two, trash bag mom. Play as a single female who's still living with her parents, preferably elderly, and basically just mooch off them and be a party animal. Trash bag mom is reckless and irresponsible, so she shacks off with every sausage on offer and gets knocked up by some dude she doesn't even know. She has the baby at home, but trash bag mom doesn't want to be a mom. She just wants to party and get laid. So after she has the baby, she fucks off, leaving her poor elderly parents to spend all of their money and time on raising her kid. When the baby is a child, trash bag mom comes back, pregnant again. She has the baby and fucks off, turning up only when she needs to borrow some money. Trash bag mom. Number three, teen mum. Being a teen is difficult enough as it is, but for this teen, things are about to get a lot more stressful. Starting off with a cookie cutter family, everything's great. Dad's a high flyer in his politics career. Mum keeps a clean home and maintains a pristine appearance and the kids are all grade A students who are involved in lots of extracurricular activities. Life seems pretty perfect. Until shit hits the fan. You play as the teenage cheerleader and overachieving preppy princess who has the world at her feet. That is until one thing leads to another with her jock boyfriend and before you know it, he's climbing the windows and sneaking into her room at night. As a naive teen, she thinks everything's great and it's all gravy. That is, until she suddenly gets a sense that something's not quite right. She bites the bullet and takes the test, but the result is not what she was hoping for. Yep, our prom queen princess is up the duff. She tells her high school sweetheart the news, and he seems supportive at first, but then the next day his house is up for sale and he's nowhere to be seen. The parents react as you would expect them to in this situation. Yeah, they are proper pissed off. But before you know it, it's the due date. Out pops the baby and the responsibility begins. 
But who is responsible? Well, you can go in two directions with this one. I like to mix it up a bit. Option one is that she raises the baby, becomes a doting mother and proves all of her doubters wrong. Option two is that the parents raise the babe, and as far as everyone bar the family is concerned, the baby is theirs, and our cheerleader teen is merely a sibling. Yeah, teen mom. Number four, the sleaze bag. Surprisingly, this story actually involves a very happy family. Three happy families, in fact. Of course, they are only this happy because they have no idea the other families exist. You start off as a single, eligible bachelor who can charm the pants off any sim they like. You're out and about on the town when you spot a sim that makes your heart race. You go through the motions of whining and dining until you've convinced your partner that you would be a good choice for a lifelong relationship. But you're a fast mover and you waste no time in getting down on one knee and popping the question. And before you know it, the next noise you hear is the sound of wedding bells, followed fairly quickly by the sound of babies screaming as you start to grow your family. Your wife is a doting mother and happy in every way. But that's because she has no idea how much of a sleazebag you are. She thinks you're a top businessman, which is why you're always out on work calls. However, little does she know that you're actually off to go see your girlfriend for a steamy encounter and maybe a spot of dinner. Being the fast mover that you are, it takes no time for your girlfriend also to fall pregnant. And just like that, you've welcomed another bundle of joy into the mess you've created. It's all too easy to spread your time equally between the two families. Families that are still continuing to grow, might I add. Now, I know what you're thinking. How does this man afford to pay for two families and keep up the appearance of constantly working? Well, that's where girlfriend number three comes in. Girlfriend number three is already a successful business tycoon. A sim who worked her way to the top and is now desperately looking to settle down and start a family. You are, of course, happy to oblige in being the family man she's always wanted, and you manage to snag a hefty allowance each week that you can distribute between the other two families. Will they ever find out about each other? That's for you to decide. That's the sleazebag's choice. Number five, child exploitation. This one is pretty straightforward and doesn't really have much of a soppy backstory. Basically, adopt a load of kids, put them in cells, and get them to perform multiple actions that are going to bring home the bacon. Money makes the world go round, after all. The real money comes in when they grow up. As teens, they can start crafting all sorts. Maybe you'll even be able to open up a shop. You'll have your own non-stop candle maker, crafting stationer, flower maker, robot builder, and many more. This storyline works best with cheats. I personally recommend cheating the needs to get the most out of this. Cheeky bit of child exploitation. <laughs> Number six, I couldn't think of a name for this one, so let's just call it business time. For this one, you can use whatever backstory you want. The bottom line is, this girl is a boss babe and she ain't got no time for a committed relationship. She may spend most of her time climbing up the corporate ladder, but needs are still needs. So when she's not at the office, she likes to go out on the town and add another name to her long list of one-night stands. This sim doesn't settle for any old man, though. She's always preferred a challenge. So the real rule here is that every sim she has relations with must be married. Wives of Newcrest, you have been warned. Partners of Oasis Springs, keep your guard up and everyone else should sleep with one eye open. Mortimer Goth. Bob Pancakes. Oh yeah, business time. Number seven, addicted to plastic. Some sims are just vanity obsessed. And that is a great way to describe this leading lady. Or man, doesn't really matter. This type of way of life is based mostly on Simstagram followers and or fame. I like to mix it up sometimes. The idea is to set milestones for the amount of followers or fame your sim reaches, and when they hit their first milestone, head on in to create a sim and treat them with a little bit of cosmetic surgery. I usually start with a nose job. Oh, did you just hit that second milestone? Sounds like boob job time. Keep going and going until your sim looks like a plastic fanatic Barbie doll. And obviously it's up to you how kind or unkind you want to be. Number eight, picture perfect. This is somewhat storyline, somewhat build and buy, if I'm honest. I've mentioned before how much of a sentimental sop I am, so nothing pleases me more in a Sims home than seeing loads of family pictures. I like to be able to look around the house and instantly know who lives there. 
So I usually like to start with a young married couple from the 50s and take a few black and white or sepia pics of them on their wedding day and standing outside the house. Then we get to introduce a little bit more of colour as the kiddies arrive, from birthday parties to prom dates. And you can just keep doing it for generations in the future and you can get to look back at your great-great-grandparents. Number nine, dark and obscure. This one isn't so much of a storyline and is more for aesthetics. With the amount of packs and themes we have in the game, there are so many possibilities when it comes to style, homes, hobbies. But whenever I play, I always find that I just follow my own personal taste. And all that happens is that all of my sims tend to look the same. They all wear the same sort of clothes and their homes are all decorated with the same objects that I love. Sometimes it's good to play with something different. One theme I like to dabble in is a mixture of boohoo style meets supernatural meets gothic. Playing as a quirky sim who is passionate about the obscure, you can find odd knickknacks around the house, along with the spellcaster essentials if you want them to be a spellcaster too, along with a career that is more suited to a sim like this. I would suggest something crafty like candle making or maybe the odd cheeky bit of knit knitting. And if you want that extra bit of ambience, then have a few sims die on the lot too, to add to the creepy atmosphere and complement your sims' fascination with the supernatural. And I saved the best for last, Slags to Riches. This storyline requires a couple of mods uh, to get the most out of it. I'm sorry, console players. But it's a bit like Rags to Riches challenge, only instead of gathering collectibles and performing conventional tasks, your sim gets their money by being a woohoo worker. I like to call it slags to riches. You start with nothing and gradually build your life from offering special services. There are loads of mods you can use to get the most out of this. You can use the cam girl mod during the day and earn some money by performing intimate shows. You can use hoe it up to rake in the money at the club by pole dancing, lap dancing or giving woohoo services. And also you can use the sugar life mod. Go get yourself a few sugar partners to give you a daily allowance, and before you know it, you're raking in 20k a day. If you've been following my channel, you'll probably know that I actually have a video doing a Let's Play like this. So if you haven't seen it, I'll link it in the description and in the white banner at the top if you want to check it out. Well, there you go. There's 10 storylines you can play out in The Sims if you fancy spicing things up a bit. Let me know in the comments what storylines you revisit all the time, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.